Alright, so the new update for PC for Warframe has just been added to PC, so there's been a lot of new patch notes that were added to this, so I'm just going to go through the different patch notes for this update and just see which ones are good and which ones are really bad. So, starting off with the first part, for the additions to this, uh, they added translations for the War Within for other languages, which is really good, so there won't be that much of a problem there. They added the ability to purchase decorations from the placement section, screen, and decorator mode. I'm not much the person to decorate my ship, so this doesn't really bother me that much. I'm not sure if that's going to be a good or bad thing. They added the ability to run multiple up to six dedicated server processes from the launcher. I'm pretty sure that's just a PC only thing since I am a console player for PS4. I'm not sure if that's really going to affect me if it comes to console later on. Now the next one corresponds with this one so it doesn't really affect me, I don't think it does. They added a new UI animation for abilities so if you're using something like Desecrate, Hysteria, abilities like that, they'll have an own symbol to show that it's active. Okay on to the next one. Uh, sortie changes, remove Nightane from the sortie reward table and added a 3 day booster in its place. Now I don't know really what to say about this, I like affinity boosters and resource boosters and stuff like that but the Nightane is not that easy to get and doing it in alerts is not really that useful since I want to do other things outside of that. Getting 3 of them will save me a lot of time per day if I get them at least once or twice a week that's pretty good. So I'm not sure if this change is something I want, but I guess I can deal with this since maybe a 3 day affinity booster can help me hit my master rank up and maybe get some more Kuva from a resource booster. Okay so they changed the Exilus Adapter Blueprint Reward to a fully crafted one. Now this is what they should have been doing for Orkin Reactors and for Orkin uh, Catalysts. Those kind of things should already be built. I shouldn't have to craft them since I'm going to have to wait 24 hours anyways to even get them. By that time, uh, I'll be doing the next sortie anyway, so it won't really bother me that much. I wouldn't really care at that point. They reduced the length of endless runs for survivals being 15 minutes to 10 minutes, which is really good. Since doing those is way too long, and sometimes when you're doing it on the last part of the sortie, it can get really tiresome and really annoying when they hit past 100 for ranks. So that change is really good, and for excavations, they changed it from 1000 to 500 cryotics, so you won't have to stay in the excavation that long, which is really good since those are not the best in sortie missions, especially since the enemies are really strong at that point. So that's a pretty good change. I'm glad they actually changed that one. Okay, Conclave changes. Um, I'm just going to leave these on screen for maybe a minute because I don't play Conclave. So these kind of changes I don't really understand since I don't play this. I played it once and that was just to have fun with my friends and just goof around and just have fun. I didn't really understand any of the stuff from the mods to anything like that. So I'll just move on from that. I see that Bladestorm costs 100 energy now for the first mark so I'm guessing Bladestorm is not going to be as effective as it was before in the Conclave. And Mesa's passive is not going to regenerate health anymore so I guess that's another bad thing to this. That's the best I can get out of it since I don't play Conclave. And I'll move on to the next part. Arcanes now can be removed from the distiller without it wasting the distiller. So you only have to buy it one time I'm guessing. And you can always get rid of arcanes out of your Warframe or your Sidana or helmet or anything like that. Which is really good so you don't have to be paying 50000 every time just to get a new distiller to get rid of another arcane from a different Warframe. This is a really good change since buying those is kind of expensive and nobody wants to buy those over and over. Now something that's really interesting is the Glaive Prime got changed. It got its base damage buffed from 35 to 45 so it will be a little bit stronger. It has an increased proc chance from 10 to 20 percent so it will be more effective and you're able to get more crit chance builds. And it added a force knockdown and bleed status effect so maybe this can be a little more fun to use in dojo fights and this will actually be more effective in end game material. But I highly doubt it's going to hit into the hundreds to 200 kind of ranks like other weapons like the Tonkor and the Sinoid Similor can reach. So finally a weapon that everyone loves to make a meme about and loves to make fun of is the Sikris Prime. It finally got changed from having a 30 to 40 damage increase. The crit chance got increased from 10 to 20% and the crit multiplier from 1.5 to 2 so this weapon will be much stronger and it added one extra burst to the clip from 21 to 24. 
so you will get one extra burst before you need to reload which is pretty good so now this weapon won't be as bad as it used to be and probably the memes can finally die about this weapon sucking as bad as it really did. Now some of these changes haven't been added into the PC files yet some of them have like the glaive but I'm pretty sure the secrets hasn't been changed yet. Or I think it's the other way around as one of those two has already been changed and one hasn't so these updates will be going out little by little throughout the day maybe throughout the week as time goes by since this is a hot fix and they can change things at will. Okay so the one change I'm really excited for is the nullifier changes where the nullifier will be deactivated when they're not alerted so doing spy missions in the corpus will be really good now since they won't be active and they won't get rid of your Loki's invisibility, your Ash's invisibility or your Evara invisibility so you don't have to worry about that. They improved the ability for arrows to do damage to the actual bubble so now it will probably require less shots to actually deactivate the bubble and hit them directly without having to go inside the bubble and damaging them yourself so this will keep them up to par with other weapons that do cause damage to it and can take out the nullifier bubbles in a matter of seconds compared to bows. And they removed the ability for nullifier bubbles to be dispelled by radial damage now I'm not really sure what they mean by this they're either talking about like spin attacks uh, I guess jumping spin attacks or they're probably talking about something like the radial damage like radiant like radiation kind of stuff so maybe radiation damage won't actually affect the bubble and maybe it'll just affect the person inside of it so I'm not really sure how that really implies for the way they wrote it so hopefully it's what it is for radiant damage because radiant damage is not used as much and being able to get rid of the ability to be using slide attacks to kill them is kind of annoying since that's kind of the most common ways of getting rid of them anyways. Okay so Riven mods have been changed a little bit not that much but they did add some different UI changes for trading chats and for actually typing Riven mods out I'm guessing. I don't really do that much I just type in the name of the mod and the stats they give when I'm trading so I don't think that's gonna really affect me that much. This position has been reduced for the following weapons the Soma, the Simulor, and the Tonkor. Now I do have a Soma Riven mod that's really good with crit chance, crit damage, and a status duration which I'm trying to get rid of for something better maybe uh, a bigger magazine size for a faster reload speed or something but the fact that it's going to be reduced kind of worries me since I'm probably going to have to get rid of it maybe sell it for a couple of hundred plat because I know a lot of people on PS4 have been asking for it for a crazy amount of prices and I'm pretty sure I can get rid of it before this change actually happens so I'm not getting ripped off myself. They did increase however some of other weapons like the Flux Rifle, the Tetra, the Panthera, the Mitre, Buzzlock, Harpack, the Mutilus Quanta, the Tiburon, and the Atticus. So these weapons will be stronger which is good. So now there will be more variety of weapons probably being used and more people wanting to buy these type of weapons since the goal of the ribbon system was to make weapons like those become more useful. But yet they added mods for the Soma, Simulor, Tonkor, Dread. Paris, Cernos, they're adding Riven mods to other weapons that shouldn't have Riven mods yet. Maybe in the future they should have had them if they become outclassed by other weapons but for now they shouldn't have because that's the only ones people want which is bad. So on to the next changes, the rest of the changes are really just general changes like adding, like fixing bugs and stuff like that which are not really noticeable but some people have these problems like Cyandana changes to where they match up in the right spot so it's more symmetrical, removing gas damage as a trigger for the Grenier shrapnel mine, stuff like that. What I wish they would change is the fact of those electric traps on the ground doing as much damage as they do because it's kind of absurd how much damage they actually do especially when you're invisible as a Loki or an Ivara or Ash and they can still detect you and damage you and you get caught because of that. Now there's a lot of extra ones that are in this list which I will not really go over because there's way too many bug fixes and changes that I'll be sitting here a whole 10 more minutes just explaining each and every one of them and some of them are kind of hard to understand and I really don't feel like going off the top of my head on telling you each and every one of them since this will take a lot of time and they added more and more and I'm just keep going they did change a lot more stuff Teshin, uh, open slot requirements for Helios in the arsenal fixed operator being affected by the cloak arrow bubble until the transfer back into their warframe stuff like that I guess some color changes um, animation changes stuff like that so there has been a lot of changes in this update which I hope really help and I'm glad that DE is actually listening to the community and actually changing things accordingly the way things should be changed instead of just keeping them the way they are and people just staying pissed the whole time wondering when is Riven Mod going to be changed, when are weapons going to be buffed, 
when our glitch is going to be fixed, stuff like that, and hopefully DE can stay on top of these glitches and fix them before people get more outrage and people start leaving the community and then we'll be losing fan base from that. So hopefully these changes are really good and I can't wait to see them on the PS4. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more Warframe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay frosty.